Hello, hello, my nasties. For those of you who are new here, hi, hello, welcome. I am Carla. I draw and I'm a spooky lady. So for a Vlogtober slash Vlogoween video, I thought doing a sketchy Saturday at least twice during the month of October was going to be fun. So we're going to do it. What is sketchy Saturday? If you are new here, I obviously keep a sketchbook. I mean, what artist doesn't, right? I think that's kind of the norm now. It's de rigueur for all artists to keep a sketchbook. So of course, I keep a sketchbook. And I work on a lot of artwork uh, for not only myself, but so personal artwork, coloring books, and then as well as Patreon. I currently have a Patreon at two tiers. One is kind of just a tip jar where you can toss a couple bucks at me to buy a supply or two every month. And the other tier is my Color Fiend tier. Those are the ones who want to be a little bit more involved. They have their names in my um, my end screens, kind of my, my production credits, if you will, for my videos. And every month they receive at least one exclusive coloring page. And I illustrate the coloring pages in my sketchbook, then I turn them into line art for my patrons, and then I choose one or two every once in a while to render out completely in my sketchbook and create a video for it. I do that for two different reasons. One, my Patreon patrons who have the exclusive line art can then print it out and color along with me if they wish to. Just a little fun little, a little fun little tea party session for us to have. And also, I do the sketchy Saturdays for people on YouTube who have absolutely no interest in becoming a Patreon color fiend patron, so a patron at that tier. Again, I have two tiers, but only one receives the line art. So if you don't care about the line art or Patreon in general, you don't have to. You can still watch the sketchy Saturday and hang out and enjoy. So it's a twofold approach, which I love. And yeah, that's it. Today we are doing a Patreon exclusive coloring page. This was the exclusive page for, well, one of the pages for September. And we are going full on autumnal today. We're doing browns and we're doing a little bit of pinks. I'm not doing my obnoxious colors today. Pinks, oranges, browns is what we're gonna go with today, but we're not gonna go with my, my typical Carla neon bright obnoxious colors. Surprise, surprise. I'm in the mood to be a little bit more autumnal, a little bit more neutral. And yes, the false nails are back. They will return for, mm, you know, we might keep them on all of October or at least a good chunk of October, I don't know. I had an incident where I broke a couple of nails recently and um, my naturals are underneath, they're growing out. Let's see, right here. So my naturals are right here. Can you see this? They're, they're getting long. I'm not gonna flip my nail over because you can't see it, but they're right there. So the nails are getting long, they're getting long, but your girl had a meltdown because I broke two nails last weekend, so now we gotta we gotta cover them, keep them extra protected. So we've got the fake claws on temporarily. I'm hoping that I can get my naturals back to this length. They were this length back in the day, and then I chopped them off, so mm, wah, wah. Anyways, nails are a big deal for me. If you've been here for a while, you know how much I love nails. Let's get on with the page today. What are we gonna do with the background? So I know that I want to do, obviously, the neutrals. This is a pumpkin spice latte, or make it whatever you want, a hot chocolate, tea, a chai tea with whipped cream. I don't care. Do whatever the hell you want. But, ooh, a hot buttered rum. I don't care. Do what you want. But in my brain, it is, of course, the basic bitch drink of all basic bitch drinks, it is a pumpkin spice latte. Because you know what? I had a pumpkin spice latte for the first time last year. Or was it two years ago? Ooh, it was during the, the whole COVID times. I mean, I know we're still in the time of the pestilence, but when it was strong, I had a... Was it last year or the year before? Oh my God. I don't know. I talked about it in a video ages ago, but that's that doesn't matter. I had one for the first time. I liked it. Obsessed? No, but I did enjoy it. So, Jesus, is she ever going to get down to coloring? Yes. Yes. Um, I'm just debating. I know I want to give her pink hair. Do I? How about pink pink froth? Okay, let's... What do I always tell you guys? What do I always tell you guys? When you start to think too much is when you just got to shut your mouth and do something. So, let's grab some brushes. And let's start slapping down some color. I will have 
as I typically do the art supplies listed down below. They will be listed and or linked. Now I always have to say disclaimers, disclaimers, that none of the supplies that I use unless otherwise noted are Amazon exclusives. So you do not have to shop at Amazon if you do not wish to, but I will have the Amazon links for your convenience and of course for the couple pennies that I earn <laughs> if you choose to shop on Amazon. But again, you don't have to shop there. Nothing is an Amazon exclusive unless I explicitly say so. But uh, I don't think I use anything that's Amazon exclusive to be honest. So it doesn't really matter. Just know that if you are interested in anything that I'm using, it will be listed and or linked down below. Most of what I use is pretty mainstream, if not everything. Well, no, not everything that I use is easily available, but most of them. I am starting with the Tombow markers, which I love. The Tombow markers are not the best water-based markers on the market, but they are a very high quality, easy to use, inexpensive, and readily available option. I have, I don't have a lot actually, my supply has been dwindling down. I noticed that today while I was going through them because there were certain colors that I wanted to reach for and I realized, ooh, I don't have those available. But I do have a Humongo box, I think I have the biggest box that's available on the market of, is it 150 of the Crayola Super Tips? I think that's the biggest. And I do use the Super Tips quite often, so I use those more as a supplement to the Tombow markers, whatever I'm missing in the Tombow, chances are I can find it in my stash of Crayola Super Tips. But I will say this, the Super Tips are very clearly and obviously not of the same caliber in terms of quality. So they're not that great, but they have their uses, they have their purpose, and because they are so low quality, it allows me to achieve a certain effect that I can't otherwise get with the Tombow. All of this to say, don't feel bad if you don't have the best of the best. If you don't have the Tombos, don't worry about it. Just go with the Crayola Super Tips. Now, I will say that if you are on a budget and you want a watercolor marker, now is not the time to be as cheap as possible. The Crayola Super Tips are incredibly affordable. Everybody can purchase the Crayola Super Tips. They are the cheapest markers available that are of good quality. Don't go to the dollar store, don't go anywhere else to purchase water-based markers because you're going to waste your money. Spend a couple extra pennies and get the Crayola Super Tips. I started using the Crayola Super Tips before I moved on to the Tombow and to this day I still use them. This is another reason why I like to encourage people to use crappy supplies for as long as you can because you will learn the charm that some low-end supplies have and then you can then use those later in conjunction with your high-end supplies to get some really unique results. It's cool. It's a nice little trade-off there. We are going to work um, a little backwards today. Instead of working top to bottom, I'm going to go bottom to top a little. We're going to bounce around, but I'm feeling like I want to get this pumpkin spice mug out of the way now because the the neutrals, I don't work with neutrals often. Some of you guys are probably shaking in your boots, but this is not going to be the most neutral page that I've ever worked on, nor will it be the most neutral page that I ever will work on because I've been itching to pull out some really boring well, I, that's the wrong word because there are people out there who love neutral colors, okay? It, it it gets them going. They love it. I personally am not a neutral color kind of gal. I have nothing against neutral colors. They just don't speak to me. I'm loud. I'm obnoxious. And I enjoy my colors being the same way. As such, because I gravitate towards loud, obnoxious colors, I've just never really exercise the neutral part of my artsy brain. So just as a personal challenge, I want to start using neutrals periodically. They're not going to become a staple. It's just something that I want to challenge myself with and something that I want to challenge myself to do because your girl never does it. 
So probably this fall we're going to see a couple of experiments with neutral colors. The tans, the beiges, the taupes, you know what I mean? The That sort of thing. Very autumnal. Mm. And uh, because I don't use those colors often, I find that I have to concentrate a little bit more on what I'm doing. Not too much because I am of the thought that I am of the the thought school will say that if you are focusing and thinking too much on technique and precision you're not really having fun anymore and if I'm not having fun making art there's no point in doing it so I don't want to catch myself thinking too hard about oh should I use this shade of orange or this shade of brown or da 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 I just need to shut my mouth and do it and see what happens we'll experiment that way because Coloring in my style with my bright colors and all of that has become second nature. I don't really have to think about it too much anymore. And uh, that's the groove I enjoy being in. And I don't want to think too hard about boring neutrals, <laughs> quite frankly. All right, so this little, what is this, whipped cream? needs to definitely be a lighter color. Um, true story, I have ordered several pumpkin spice lattes in my life at this point, and I don't always get the whipped cream. In fact, I think I've probably got the whipped cream twice. I'm a pumpkin cold, cold cream cold brew. If we're talking in Starbucks language, pumpkin cold cream cold brew. Uh, the local coffee shops always have really fun drinks, but there's no point in me sharing those with you because you don't have my local coffee shops and that would just annoy you if something I described sounded delicious and you couldn't get it. But Starbucks is universal. You know, that demon that is disgusting Starbucks. Starbucks is not disgusting. It's just... I'm a... Um, I'm not a coffee connoisseur, okay, but I'm a snob when it comes to ingredients and you can definitely tell when beans are locally grown, locally roasted and when the cream is fresh like literally from the farm down the road right you can tell the difference between that and Starbucks oh I will drink a Starbucks I will drink a Starbucks all day long but I'm just saying local coffee shops for the win each and every time one thing I enjoy doing when I go to different cities doesn't matter where it is different states different cities I will always always always. Well, I will always have a Starbucks, absolutely, because drive throughs is convenience. But I will always find local coffee shops, and I've never been disappointed. I'm sad when I leave because there have been instances where I find those coffee shops that are so good, and then I think, oh my god, I am 10 states away, I will never have this coffee again, and it's a sad moment, but that's, um, that's a tale for another day. How many people out there despise coffee? I've got to have people on this channel watching who despise coffee, right? I am a coffee and a tea person. I drink both. And no doubt I have people who despise coffee and who likely despise coffee and tea. Let me know down below if you are one of those people. If you are, I don't know what to do with you. If you don't like coffee, that's fine. But how can you hate tea? Tea is delicious. Tea is delicious. I'm not a sugary drink person, so that's probably why. Um, I could drink anything that tastes like the bottom of a witch's potion all day long. Anything herbal, anything a little bit tart, bitter, just... Mm, oh, God. You know what I'm going to do? We are, right now that we are on the topic of um, herbally questionable flavors, I mean, literally, I, okay, don't offer me a milkshake. Don't offer me a mocha frappa capo whatever chino from Starbucks. But if you set me loose, in the potion cabinet of a witch, and I find every bitter flower, root, herb tonic that she has, I will grab a sparkling mineral water and I will mix the two and 
I will have the greatest thing in the world. I enjoy herbal aromatic flavors. That's that's the that's the technical jargon, the aromatic, right? But I do. And uh, I love a cocktail. You guys know we've discussed this, but I despise consuming alcohol. I'm not a huge fan of the flavor of alcohol. In fact, I detest it. I don't think that there's anything good in the flavor of alcohol, but I appreciate the sting that it gives to a drink. I hate consuming poison, but I enjoy the sting. That said, I do enjoy a mocktail. When I'm at home, I generally will drink mocktails as opposed to cocktails because why am I going to be poisoning myself in my own home? Why? Why? And there are now some really, really freakishly convincing alcohol substitutes. They've been out for many years. They've been on the market, but I feel as though in recent years they have been gaining in popularity because I suppose people are finally realizing that, hey, consuming too much alcohol is stupid. And the the whole fun, the mystique of cocktails for me is the mixology. It's the flavors mixing together. And when you go out to a fancy bar, because I'm not the type of person who enjoys hanging out at dive bars. I like going to the frou free. Um, frou free, the frou fee pretentious bars, the ones that charge you an arm and a leg for a cocktail because the bartender is chipping the ice for you, they're shaving the ice, they're muddling grapefruit right in front of you, they have the fresh mint right outside the door, you know, those kind of places. I'm that kind of princess. But I'm spending all of this money on a drink and I can only drink one or two per evening because any more would be disastrous and incredibly poisonous. I would like the experience of being able to drink as many different, I mean, they're alchemy in a cup, basically. I want all of these alchemic beverages. I want to drink more than two per night, and I want to do it every night, right? And so non-alcoholic beverages are the way to go with alcohol substitutes. And so all of this to say that I have begun a journey of becoming my own personal bartender with non-alcoholic drinks, mocktails. And for those of you who have been following my subscriber count journey and have been listening to me talk about how, yes, I am going to be, I was going to say filming live video, but that didn't make any sense. I will be engaging in live video in the near future. At the moment, we are at uh, about 40 subscribers away from reaching my 3,000 subscriber count, which is where I said that I wanted to start testing the waters of live video. And what I want to do, because you guys know in every video I'm constantly doing what? Drinking something, water, tea, coffee, often a combination of both. And during my live videos, yeah, your girl is going to be drinking a lot. And I thought it would be fun for me just to make it a little, ooh, a little ritual because I'm a goofball like that. If I were to, let's assume that the live videos are going to be once a week, once every two weeks, whatever it is. Every week that I do a live video, I would like to create myself a new mocktail so we can maybe do our live videos and call them a mocktail hour or something I don't know that's very cute and I was also playing with the idea of doing something like a a tea party but uh, well you know we still could because the tea parties would be cute in the fall when I could drink this is now becoming a conversation about my impending doom of filming live videos but uh, we could do, we'll have to talk about it. For those of you who care about the live video, we're going to have to talk about what we're going to do. One thing I don't think I will ever do is eat on camera, which is something that is popular for live video. People get together and they have it, eating shows, right? That I don't think I could do. Um, for no other reason than I don't like to be bothered when I'm eating and I don't like to be distracted. So I, I like to I like to eat and just enjoy my food. But drinking is real easy. That's real easy to do. 
and uh, I don't know, I, I like the idea of, um, of a, a little mocktail hour, and that way we can keep our lives to exactly an hour, and it'll be fun. And if you guys want to mix a little something up, I can give you the recipe, and it'll just, I don't know, it'll be cute. <sighs> I'm not liking this. And this is why I stay away from neutral colors, because they just don't, they don't speak to me on any level at all. I just, I, I just don't like neutrals. I just don't. Is she cute? Sure. But I don't dig her. I don't, I just don't, I don't dig her at all. It's whatever. But I know myself. And if you've been here for any stretch, you know that my artwork goes through periods of being what I consider ugly. Two thirds of the creation process, honestly, is my not enjoying the work. Until it reaches a point near the end where I start seeing everything come together because the way that I create, it's very, it's layered. And so, it just takes a while. It takes a while for everything to come together. And I know that. I have faith in my process because I've been doing it for so long. But there are still times when I doubt it a little bit. And I think, ugh, is there going to come a point where I just throw in the towel and completely dismiss this? So we'll see. And uh, Bentley is going to start serenading us in a moment. So prepare your ears for that. Or maybe not. I heard a siren off in the distance, but now it, it stopped. So... Bentley is the resident gremlin. If you are new here, he's my little my little dog rat who loves singing at uh, sirens. He's a kook, and I love him. And I let him do what he wants. So if he's going to start screeching in the middle of a video, he's going to start screeching in the video in the middle of a video. Yeah, no, mm -mm. not a neutral girl. Hmm, mm -mm -mm. just not. She's just not. Uh, she's cute. She is. But wah, wah. we'll see. I will actually. I have some chores to do. And uh, again, because I'm wanting to ensure that this video makes it up for Sketchy Saturday. Because I don't want to fail. I don't want to fail at Vlogtober slash Vlogoween. You guys know me. I'm not a coddler. I don't coddle myself. I'm going to allow myself a couple of cheat days. And look, if I have to skip a day or two, that's fine. I'm not going to like it, but I'll allow myself to. But I'm not going to give myself the green light to say, if you miss something, you tried your best. It's okay. No. I'm a hard ass. And if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And so I'm going to do everything in my power to make that happen. And in this instance, I want to make sure that I have at least two sketchy Saturdays up in Vlogoween. Vlogtober slash Vlogoween. And I'm going to shut my trap. Do some chores and get back to this and I'm going to work on a good chunk of this off camera and then we'll see we'll see where we go I'll see you in a bit okay my nasties so for the sake of finishing this lovely little lady on camera I decided to just go ahead and complete the entire thing I added the rest of the lines I added the highlights and now she's done is there more I could do to it absolutely but this is just a sketchbook. We can't be too precious and we need to move on. I think she looks adorable as is. So this is where we're going to leave her. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, most of your questions could be answered down below in the description box. I keep all of the supplies that I use down there. But if you have any questions, comments, queries, if you just want to bitch about something, go ahead and feel free to leave that in the comments. I would appreciate it and I will get back to you. Everything you need to know will be down below, links to where you can find me on social media, links to my website, all of that good stuff. Also now put in a link to my online boutique down there as well. We're getting close to opening date. That opens this month. So with that being said, I hope that you enjoyed 
this episode episode <laughs> I was I was combining sketchy and episode. So this episode, I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Sketchy Saturday. Hopefully we can do one every Saturday this month. That would be fun. Off I go. Be bad, be good. I do not give a damn which. Just make sure you come back in one piece. All right? Shoo, shoo, shoo. I will see you tomorrow.